Jimmy Hudson was a baby who could be weaponized like Winter Soldier was, but instead he grew up to become a powerful superhero with the abilities of both Wolverine and Colossus. Well, that's Jimmy Hudson for you. Making his first appearance in the 2010 comic Ultimate X No. 1, Jimmy was the son of Wolverine and Magda Lenscher, Magneto's former wife. But due to serious complications and a threat to Jimmy's life, Logan had to give up the baby. Growing up, Jimmy learned about his powers and ancestry and became a force to reckon with. And although Jimmy has a lot more to learn, he truly is his father's son. In this video, we will explore his origin, some marvelous story arcs, and what makes his powers more enhanced than Wolverine's. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you'd like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Logan Seed Several years ago, Logan was working for S.H.I.E.L.D. One of his missions was the destruction of something called Project Mothervine, which was an initiative to weaponize mutations. Mothervine was basically an aggressive biotech serum that would lead to the birth of programmable mutants. These mutants could be activated or triggered through voice command, and as long as that didn't happen, the mutants would remain sleeper agents. When Logan was working as a government agent, Logan did manage to find the location of Mothervine, but he also met Magda Lenscher, his former lover and spy. In the third issue of Ultimate Comics World, Wolverine, the old flame between the two of them rekindled. The next thing we knew, Logan was doing what he did best. The two of them were rocking the bed under the sheets. From their conversation, we learned that three years prior to this meeting, I mean meeting, Magda and Logan crossed paths, and back then, Magda was Magneto's wife. However, Eric was just a mission for Magda, but he found out that she was a spy and took her kids. Pietro and Wanda away from her. Nevertheless, the pursuit of Mothervine had once again brought Logan and Magda together. They both had been employed by different people to pull the plug on Project Mothervine, and despite having the serum with her, there was no way Magda could sneak it out without Wolverine noticing it. And moreover, Wolverine had frisked her a bit too well in bed, so she injected herself with Mothervine's purest strain of the serum before bidding adieu to Logan and ending the one night stand. Later in the comic, Magda takes a pregnancy test and is shocked to find that she is carrying Logan's child. The Fruit In the next issue of the comic, Logan is sent on another mission to retrieve the mother vine that Magda had stolen. Logan does manage to track her down, or maybe she tracked him down. This time around, Magda came with a baby boy in her arms. Clearly, Logan was not expecting how the events unfolded before him. He cut off his comms and gave his undivided attention to Magda. I guess somewhere deep down, he understood that she was holding the result of all the cardio he did with her a few months back. Magda tells him the same and reveals how she injected herself with Mothervine. However, she goes on to say, When I injected the needle in my arm, I was only thinking of how I might smuggle the formula out of the country. I didn't know I was pregnant. Magda may have been a spy and all that, but she had suffered a lot as a mother. Pietro and Wanda had been taken from her and turned into living weapons. She knew that the baby probably did not change anything for Logan or his mission. He was prepared to bring her to S.H.I.E.L.D. However, she tells him that they may be killers and mercenaries and may not be cut out to be parents, but they definitely weren't monsters who would give up a baby to serve as the government's lab rats. Logan's heart changed, and he became convinced that his son had to be protected. Magda hands over their baby to Logan, and also gives him a drive that contains answers for their son when he is old enough. Before leaving, Magda tells Logan that she will make the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents follow her by leaving a trail of blood, which was an obvious request to Logan to stick her with his claws. The good old Logan did not even let her complete the sentence and did what she asked. Having said that, Logan did seem hurt by the fact that he was going to see Magda for the last time. Her last words to him were, Whatever you do, find someone to keep him safe until he's old enough to protect himself. But that wasn't the end of Magda. The Favor At the end of issue 4 itself, Logan goes to meet his old friend and ex-colleague, James Hudson. James had known Logan from the Iraqi War, in which they had served together. James owed Logan a lot. The mutant had saved James's life on more than one occasion, and he even introduced James to Heather, the woman James would later marry. James knew that women couldn't keep their hands off Logan, so if that guy said that Heather was a good girl, it meant something. One day, Logan met James out of the blue, holding a baby in his arms. Now from here on, there are minute changes. In the setting in Ultimate Comics Wolverine issue number 4, and Ultimate X issue number 1. 
In the latter, James Hudson explains that Logan knocked on his and Heather's door on a night it was raining so heavily that one could smell the approaching hurricane. However, in the other comic, Logan meets the Hudsons at a park in St. Lucie, Florida. Logan gives up his son to the couple and promises that he would never interfere with the way they choose to raise him, and parts ways after saying, I want him to have a chance to grow up to be his own man, a good man, and for that he needs a good family to look after him. James and Heather named the kid Jimmy. All Logan wished for Jimmy was that he would be loved, and his wish was granted. Heather and James had wanted a child for quite some time, and life had presented them with the missing jigsaw piece when they least expected it. Jimmy's Discovery Sixteen years after that incident, Jimmy grows up into a young boy and happens to take after his birth father. He had Logan's looks and a way with women, especially if they were redheads. Jimmy and another guy named Chaz were about to compete with each other in a street race. The race began and it wasn't before long that the tire of Jimmy's car burst. The car flipped several times before crashing into the nearby field. To make things worse for poor Jimmy, the fuel tank of the car exploded, but Jimmy managed to crawl out of it. He was covered in his own blood from top to bottom. Metal pieces were sticking out of his entire body. The damage to his knees was such that his bones were visible, but as soon as his girlfriend saw that he was in fact healing, she freaked out. What are you? Are you one of them? Jimmy Hudson begged her to listen to him, but she was finding him gross now that it was clear that he was a mutant. So a little Backstory here. Before the events of the comic, the world was on the brink of destruction, and countless heroes had died, including most of the original X Men. In fact, teams like the Fantastic Four had been disbanded, and all the mutants were now being hunted as criminals. Quite simply put, the race of Homo superiors was now being looked down upon more than ever, and there was a feeling of hatred that all the people shared for the mutants. Nevertheless, James Hudson arrived to rescue his son on a helicopter. It turns out that the county had elected him to serve as the sheriff because of his past job profile. James gets Jimmy home, but the young kid has a lot of questions about how he could recover in no time after being drenched in his own blood for so long. James thought it was time that the boy was told about his past, but Heather did not want that. Probably, she feared that it would take Jimmy away from her. Jimmy and Kitty the following day, Jimmy was paid a visit by Kitty Pride, who it seems was dating Logan not very long ago. She hands him a box that is filled with personal belongings and a dog tag of one Jay Howlett, aka Wolverine. Along with the personal artifacts, she also gave him the drive that Magda had once given to Logan to be passed over to their kid. Logan had recorded a video message into the drive, and it revealed that Logan was now dead. Logan tells Jimmy how he was his kid, but reminds him that the Hudsons were, in fact, his parents, people whom he should always respect, for they raised him and gave him all the love of the world. At the same time, he forbids Jimmy from inquiring about his mother. Jimmy found it difficult to digest that he was not human, but then Kitty convinced him to try and use his powers. If you inherited any of what he had, you'll be able to heal from any wound. You'll be strong enough and maybe stupid enough to take on the Hulk. Jimmy started to wonder if he had inherited those claws as well from his father. He tried the trick, and within no time, three claws protruded out of both his hands, leaving them bloody and him in pain. The whole sequence is quite graphic to be honest, but it's thrilling nonetheless. But the claws that came out of Jimmy's hands were made of bone, at which he seemed surprised. He probably expected adamantium, which Kitty explained was grafted onto Logan at a later stage, and that he initially had bone claws. However, just as Jimmy thought of adamantium, his claws started to grow a coat of something metallic, presumably adamantium. In the next few comics, Jimmy initially coated his teeth with this metal, but in the latest story arc, he has converted his entire body with the metal, much like Colossus, who could turn his skin into metal at will. The Hudsons joined Kitty and Jimmy. Heather was clearly furious that her fears of losing her son were about to turn into a reality, but Kitty explained that she didn't mean any harm. James has a talk with Jimmy about the future and what lies ahead, and that's where the comic ends. Marvelous Story Arc of Jimmy Hudson Jimmy Hudson's story has just begun in the Marvel Universe, but he already has quite a few interesting story arcs. We think you'd be thrilled to look at a few of them. Jimmy's Journey with What Remained of the X-Men Some time later, 
Valerie Cooper, the special advisor to the president on superhuman and mutant affairs, went on television to reveal that mutants were not exactly a superior race, but the result of experiments formed by government scientists to recreate super soldiers on the lines of Captain America. According to her, the first of these mutants was Wolverine himself. However, this clearly didn't sit well with Jimmy, and he decided it was time to learn more about his father's past. During his journey, he found other mutants like the Human Torch, Iceman, and Kitty Pride. Soon, he heard something about a mission that Rogue was carrying out. When Kitty learned that it was about Stryker, she tried to stop her colleagues, but Jimmy and the others went ahead with it anyway. However, Kitty later joined in and landed the final killing blow on Stryker, but he had become a mutant by now and had managed to transfer his consciousness to Nimrod, an extremely advanced sentinel prototype. By now, humans had formed a militia against mutants, and then there was the threat that came from Sentinels. This twin threat forced the mutants to fend for themselves and stick together more than ever. In fact, they somewhat formed an army along the lines of the X-Men, who dedicated themselves to fighting anyone who intended to hurt them, but refrained from killing for as long as it was possible. During this time, Jimmy took a leadership role in this mutant army. Later, the government asked the mutants to either take a cure developed by Southeast Asian Republic or live on a sovereign piece of land. Only 20 mutants chose the second option, and Jimmy was one of them. Mothervine. While looking at Logan's video message once again, Jimmy learns that it has a hidden message. He sets out to find the meaning of it and ends up meeting Pietro, but the two of them get into a fight because of conflicting opinions. Pietro tells him about Mothervine and the sleeper agents it created. When Pietro activates one of the sleeper agents, whose ability is to create viruses, Jimmy refuses to kill her. Although Pietro kills her, he and Jimmy try to kill each other, but they are stopped by Magda who is revealed to be alive. Mutant Civil War Much like the Avengers Civil War divided the Earth's greatest heroes into two factions, the Mutant Civil War did the same for the mutants. These two factions were led by Jean Grey and Kitty Pride, respectively. Jimmy had been with Kitty all along, but she was fighting for peace, and Jimmy believed that he was a warrior and that warriors added no meaning to life during peaceful times. Quite stupid of Jimmy, but anyway, so he defected to Jean's side, who wanted to assimilate the land that Kitty ruled, at least in essence. However, Kitty stood up against Jean's attempts, but the psionic genius ordered that Kitty must be killed. It was now that Jimmy realized his mistakes and defended Kitty. Later, during the incursion event, Jimmy and a few other mutants ended up stranded on Prime, but they had lost memories as a result of falling from one reality into another. Jimmy and Miss Sinister The mutants who ended up on Prime Earth were brainwashed by the supervillain Miss Sinister, who turned them into her personal henchmen. These mutants formed the new Marauders, but Jimmy's resistance to telepathy enabled him to break free from the control of Miss Sinister. He went rogue and ended up in a bleak Canadian wilderness before being found by the young X-Men, who offered to help him. In fact, Jimmy even became a part of the X-Men. Poison Invasion in the comics titled Venomized, Jimmy and the others face a strange challenge in the form of the Poisons, which were a crystalline species from Earth-17952 that could assimilate with symbiotes and their hosts. The Poisons initially served as prey to stronger beings, but after assimilation, they would become powerful and a force to reckon with. Upon reaching Prime Earth, they forced the symbiotes to bond with the greatest heroes of Earth so that these heroes could be assimilated, and Jimmy Hudson was no exception. He bonded with a symbiote, but continued his fight against the Poisons and their plans of taking over Earth and the homeworld of symbiotes. However, he was assimilated by one of the Poisons, but the Poison could not kill Jimmy, making him one of the few heroes who survived. At the end of the comic, Jimmy and the Poison find themselves fighting each other for control over Jimmy's body. What makes James Hudson marvelously deadly? Jimmy's powers are quite similar to his father's, but the comics haven't explored the full extent of his powers, at least not yet. But much like Wolverine, Jimmy has an extremely high regenerative factor. Not only does it protect him from physical injuries, but it also gives him a high degree of telepathic resistance. Of course, he has those badass retractable claws, and while Wolverine's metal claws were given to him later in his life, Jimmy's claws can transform metallic at will. In fact, this guy can turn his entire body into metal at will. So one could say that he has an organic metal skeleton, 
Much like Wolverine was envisioned in the comics, Jimmy also has enhanced auditory, olfactory, and visual senses. He can recognize people by their smell, can detect ultrasonic and infrasonic vibrations and sounds, and see things clearly in little to no light. All in all, Jimmy Hudson is truly his father's son, and maybe, just maybe, Jimmy goes a step ahead too. Having said that, the young mutant has a lot to learn from life, and a lot of experiences to have. He may be equally superior to his father as far as his abilities are concerned, but Jimmy is not half the warrior Logan was, at least not yet. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.